they fight uh, against the government, but are fine for their own to fight. All right, thank you very much, Vincent Kimosop, for your time. Vincent Kimosop is the lead consultant at Sovereign Insight. Well, moving on now, fighters from the IS militant group have withdrawn from the Asian Red Sea town of Kandala in Somalia's semi-autonomous region of Puntland. This comes barely 24 hours after the militants captured the town. Puntland's forces had started an operation to flush out the militants, but it's unclear whether this led to their withdrawal. A large number of residents fled their homes on Wednesday after the fighters entered the town. The leader of IS in Somalia, Sheikh Ab Abu Kadir Mimin, was seen at the town on Wednesday holding talks with the local traditional elders. A local official explains that the group hoisted the IS flag in the town's administrative headquarters and the main police station. The U.S. put Mr. Mumin on the sanctions list in September due to his militant activities. A year ago, a group of Pontan fighters in the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab group pledged allegiance to IS. And meanwhile, two civilians have lost their lives in Somalia's southwestern high glow after Al-Shabaab fighters seized the town following the withdrawal of Ethiopian troops on Wednesday. Reports say the militant group accused the two men of working with Ethiopian and Somali troops. Hundreds of families have fled the town after Al-Shabaab's seizure. Mr. Mohammed Issa Hussein, who hails from Tigro, said most residents fled to areas in Haran, Bay and Bakul regions. More than 90 migrants are believed missing after their boat sank off the coast of western Libya on Wednesday. According to a Coast Guard spokesman, 29 migrants were rescued some 26 miles off the shore east of Tripoli. He also explained that 126 people had been on the rubber boat before one of the sides was ripped and it started taking on water. Libya is the main departure point for mostly African migrants seeking to cross the Mediterranean to Europe. Smugglers arrange ill-equipped and overcrowded vessels that frequently break down or sink. The rate of recorded deaths in the Mediterranean has risen sharply this year, with more than 3,740 migrants drowning on their way to Europe, and that nearly matches the toll for the whole of 2015. And in Congo, the powerful Catholic Church there has criticized a deal President Joseph Kabila recently struck with part of the opposition to allow him to stay in power until at least April 2018. The church says this goes beyond his mandate, which ends in December, and calls for a more inclusive agreement. The country's main opposition bloc rejected the accord, which it says is a pretext to allow Kabila to cling to power beyond the end of his mandate. The Democratic Republic of Congo's influential Catholic Church has urged politicians to renegotiate a deal struck this month to ensure a presidential election is held next year. They also want President Joseph Kabila forbidden from standing for a third term. In a country where more than 40% of Congolese identify as Catholic and where confidence in other institutions is weak, the Congolese Church has long been regarded as a moral compass. In regard to the major differences that we currently face, the bishops have deemed it necessary and urgent to call on all parties involved to come together, when convenient, to address these differences in the interest of the country. The Democratic Republic of Congo's ruling coalition and part of the opposition have agreed to delay the vote from this November to April 2018 citing logistical and budgetary difficulties enrolling millions of voters. But the vast Central African country's main opposition bloc has denounced the accord as a pretext to allow Kabila cling to power beyond the end of his mandate in December. Opposition leaders have promised further protests to oust Kabila from power, raising fears of a return to widespread violence in the country where millions have died in civil conflicts since the 1990s, and rebel groups continue to wreak anarchy in eastern regions. Why does the ruling majority support this agreement? 
It's precisely because it was signed to benefit the ruling majority as they continue to violate the constitution as long as there is power sharing. Whereas for us and the rest of the country, as you saw during our peaceful protest, our main goal remains to uphold the constitution. According to a poll conducted by the Congo Research Group at New York University, in collaboration with the Congolese Polling Institute published this week, over 81% of the respondents oppose changing the constitution to allow Kabila stand for a third term. 74% say he shall leave office this year. The results, which varied little, based on socioeconomic status, gender and religion, show a marked drop in support for Kabila, who officially won 48.9% of the vote in 2011, a consequence of a lack of economic development and poor security. More than 50 people were killed last month in demonstrations against the extension of Kabila's term. Congo has never experienced a peaceful transition of power, and analysts fear that the impasse over Kabila's plans to stay on will lead to widespread bloodletting, especially with the exclusion of key opposition members. Lawmakers in Ghana have passed a bill that could see outgoing presidents being forcibly evicted from the official residences if they fail to move out in time. The bill, which will now go to the president to sign into law, states that presidents and vice presidents will have to hand over their official homes and vehicles at least two weeks before the inauguration of a new leader. Existing legislation requires officials to hand back government property after they leave office. This, however, is the first time there's been a strict time limit applied. The current president, John Mahama, already lives in his private residence pending when his official residence, which is undergoing renovation, will be ready. In previous transitions of power, some officials have had to be forcibly evicted and had their state-owned vehicles seized after failing to hand them over. Still to come on Network Africa, countries using the CFA currency accused of sabotaging their own economies. Please stay with us. <laughs> 